Here's, here's, here it is according to me. I'm a bit taller. So we all pretty much know what an eclipse is. It's the moon moving in front of the sun. But the thing I find really exciting about eclipses is this, there's this amazing coincidence. And it's all to do with how far away the moon is from the Earth. And I'll show you why. Let's pretend that light there is the sun. And you sitting there watching this on the screen is the Earth. And this coin here is going to represent the moon. Now if the moon happened to be further away from the Earth than it actually is, this is what would happen when the eclipse happened. Our moon would come along, it would come along, and it would pass along and you'd see like a little black dot going across the sun. And we see that, that's called a transit, we see that sometimes when Mercury and Venus go past the sun, we see this little black dot going past, like a transit. Now something else could happen, the moon could have ended up a lot closer to the Earth. And if that happened, it'd be this hulking mass going past and it would completely obliterate the sun with change. It would be something like this. It would go and look at that, it completely covers it and it's all everywhere. But here's the amazing thing, and this is amazing because it's only true now. It only is true at this point in history. At the moment, the moon is at this perfect distance away. It's not too far and it's not too close. Let's see if I can get it right. It's about there. So at the moment, what happens is, when the moon goes past the sun, it just fits over it perfectly, just the most snug, perfect fit. And that's why we have that perfect picture of these two circles that look like they're the same size, covering over each other. It's completely brilliant. And it's only true now, in millions of years, the moon's actually getting further and further away from the Earth each year, just by a few inches. So in millions and millions of years, if there are humans on Earth, they'll see actually one of these ones. So we're very lucky right now to be living at a time where we see this perfect fit. But actually it's even more complicated than that if you can believe it because the moon doesn't actually go in a perfect circle around the earth. It goes in a bit of an oval or an ellipse as we call it. And what that means is sometimes when an eclipse happens it is a bit further away than it should be. It's not quite that perfect fit and we do see that little bit of light coming out the sides. We call that an annular eclipse, and that's not quite as exciting as what we're hoping to see tomorrow, which is that total eclipse. Brilliant. Yeah? Yeah, we're good. Observational astronomy is completely dependent on the weather. It doesn't matter how far you travel, it doesn't matter how exciting the experiment is that you would like to, to perform, if there's clouds in the way, you can't do anything about it. And one example of this is the 1919 total solar eclipse. This was the time when Einstein had just come up with his general theory of relativity. He had just finished it in 1915, and so the Royal Astronomical Society wanted to test this theory out and see if it would actually work. So what the theory said was that if light passes by a large object, a massive object, then the gravity of that object is going to bend that light. And it does so in a different way than the traditional standard Newtonian physics. So what his theory was, was that if you could test how light from distant stars bends around our sun, which is obviously the closest massive object with enough gravity to see this effect, then we could tell if his theory was right. But the problem is the sun is really bright and you can't just look at the stars around the sun. So they thought the best way to do this experiment was when the moon actually passed in front of the sun and blocked out the majority of the light from the sun so you could actually look at it and see, take images of the stars near the sun. So they worked out that during this 1919 solar eclipse the sun would actually pass through the Hyades star cluster which was perfect so a lot of stars right near where the sun would be. So they sent Arthur Eddington down to South Africa where the eclipse was taking place, where the path of totality passed. It took him about two months to travel there. He took several different cameras and different telescopes so he could uh, record the event. And on the day when he woke up, it probably looked quite a bit like this. <laughs> Although it was actually raining and there was actually lightning, so there was a huge storm. But nonetheless, he set up all of his instruments, he set up his telescope, and he was hoping to record this. The, the path of totality, the time of the solar eclipse, was about 
six and a half minutes at that time. And for an entire six minutes, it was completely cloudy and he wasn't able to take any data whatsoever. And then during that last 30 seconds, th less than a minute, all of a sudden the clouds cleared and he was able to take fuzzy images of, of the sky and the stars around the sun. And so with that one or two images that he took of that solar eclipse, he went back up to England and they analyzed the data and they found that the stars actually did move by more than what the Newtonian mechanics predicted and it matched more closely with what Einstein said. And it was a huge news blitz. This was revolutionary information at the time of World War I when the world was just hearing about conflicts. And so that instantly shot Einstein into fame, all because of 30 seconds of clear sky at the very end of a total solar eclipse. And there's hope for us. There's hope for us. We're not exactly trying to prove uh, any sort of general theories of, of the universe that are any different than what we already think, but we would really like to see it today. Welcome <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Thanks. What was that? That was Welcome to Ningbo. I hope you enjoy the eclipse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's 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 yeah. yeah, come on, Kira. Get your camera. Come on, Kira. 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 It's the moon in front of. Yeah, yeah. The moon passes in front of the sun. It feels wonderful. The temperature's actually starting to drop a little bit since the sun's actually being blocked and not all of the energy's coming from the sun. Oh, it's such a relief. It's only nine o'clock in the morning and it has been hot. <laughs> um, we're pretty close to, well. Let's do our little trick again. Yeah, this is how far we are. So now we're looking at the moon coming in, covering the sun from above. I mean, even with the clouds, this has to be one of, one of the most phenomenal astronomical events that you can see with your naked eye. I mean, I'm just looking at the sun right now. Oh, it got a little bit brighter around the edge. Oh. And it just doesn't happen very often in, in at each spot on the Earth. So now the whole thing goes in reverse in a sense where the moon passes across the sun on the other side. So it'll take about another hour for it to get across and it's um, we're just sitting here glowing with the <laughs> enjoyment of what we just saw. It's amazing that four and a half minutes went so quickly. <laughs> wow. Well my best guess is that during the eclipse we heard a lot of fireworks and people still making noise kind of in an ancient tradition. People were yelling and and I heard a lot of booms over from that end, so those might be <laughs> remnants of really large fireworks. Um, so right as the moon just passed right in front of it, there's a little flash that happens, and then it starts glowing in all directions around it, so you get this white glow of the corona, which I didn't actually think we were going to be able to see through the clouds at all, so I was pretty much in shock <laughs> by that and so happy that I was using my binoculars and my camera and <laughs> trying to capture it, but just to look at it and see what it looked like. Talk about this diamond ring thing. And then right at the end, so what we call second contact is when the second part of the moon comes and passes the surface of the sun, so it's completely blocked. And then when third contact happens is when uh, the, the first side of the moon crosses the, the border of the sun again. And so there's a little bit of the photosphere of the really bright part of the sun that shines through, and it's just at one little point. So what people have dubbed that is the diamond ring, because you still see the whole ring, but you see this really bright flash in one point. So we saw that. <laughs> that might have been the most exciting moment. Ah, the flash! <laughs> it's coming back! <laughs> and then just in an instant, the sky gets bright again, and it gets bright, and the temperature warms up again. It's just, there's this magical, mystery moment when it's dark and then there's this big flash and then and then the light comes out again you look pretty warm i'm warm i was excited <laughs> it's still humid and now it's gonna get hotter and hotter and it's still not even 10 a.m <laughs>